Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And I'm Brett. This is our podcast about anything and everything off road. Uh, as always, we're socially distant. It's the only way we can do the show. I'm in the Midwest of Kansas City. Ross is in the Northeast, and Brett's in the Northeast. So this is back to back shows where two thirds of the show is in the same time zone. Where two thirds of the show has actually met each other. Yes. <laughs> like physically in person. Physically in person. Yes. <laughs> that was, I can't remember who. <laughs> said it the other day it might have been it's one of the guys i follow on twitter but he and i think he might even be like a forest service guy i'm not sure um but i only have interacted with him on twitter and he was like he posted a conversation like himself with a a, like a relative being like what do you mean you have friends that you've never physically like been in the same place with them like you've only known them on the internet and i was like i do an entire podcast with a dude we've never physically been in the same space like we're hundreds of hours of time together more than hundreds <laughs> exactly more, more commonplace now that's wild that yeah, exactly yeah. it's the modern world, world. Warcraft. and and one day i was sitting with him and he's like i'm gonna go meet my buddy i haven't you know i've been playing world of warcraft for like 12 years with him or something yeah. like that. <laughs> it's like, and i was like it was like a decade they never met each other but yeah, anyway, yeah. Those, those stories are starting to be more and more prevalent because we're all more and more used to the technology Absolutely. like it's just speaking of being used to the technology do you want to talk about Easter Jeep Safari stuff? Sure. So, I mean, we'll talk I, about it briefly because it's it's not really news until we know that it's news. So the last few years for Easter Jeep Safari have really been the let's show what the Wrangler will be show. And now they're, you know, looking at the Gladiator. So speculation is 392 Gladiator, which would be phenomenal. Um, the extra wheelbase would theoretically help make it less terrifying and also four by e gladiator which Ooh. i mean there's a lot more room for batteries and, and hybrid parts in a gladiator than in a wrangler so could be interesting i just i just wrote up a tundra capstone um for one of our outlets um mm-hmm. and went through and it was like i i referenced where the battery pack is placed on that truck and i felt like they could have put way more batteries on under that the thing. seat well, yeah, it's under the rear seat, but like, there's a whole bed back there. Like, there's, I don't know, that's where like fuel tank and other stuff goes. They did, they did a good job, but like, I if you like- try to sell a pickup truck to a pickup truck buyer and part of the bed is already being used, yeah, well, like, they all have a conniption. I'm talking about <laughs> between the frame rails underneath, like oh, uh, where like Ram EV well, and Silverado yeah. EV seem to have a battery pack. And right? I say this lovingly. Toyota is just preemptively getting ready to replace the frames and doesn't want to have to deal with batteries. <laughs> I had a Tacoma that went through that. Uh-huh. Yeah. I may have sold it before the dealer actually took delivery of the frame to replace it. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody immediately took it to the dealer. So anyway, so that's that's the uh, Easter Jeep Safari news. We'll know more in the coming weeks. Yeah, weeks. So It is weeks. It is. Crazy. And then the next piece of news is a quick one. Um, so specialty vehicle engineering, uh, SVE, has done what everybody has been asking GM to do with the Colorado for since 2016 or so. So they took the 5.3, the Ecotec V8, and then supercharged it and made what's like a super ZR2. And Good Lord. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. Um, it's a lot. Would like to point out that at one time, I think it was one year only. The first generation Colorado came with a 5.3 liter V8. Did it really? It did. That's cool. It did. And they still sell for like 20 grand, even though they, you know, have the build quality of like play school toys. It sound like uh, Subaru Bajas with turbos and manual. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about frame rust. Shit. <laughs> Dude, my internet has ground to a halt. I am trying to do for the video participants, if you're wondering why I haven't shared anything yet, it's because I, my, Computer will not open images right now. That's okay. For the audio listener, everything should be normal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think the audio listener after this Colorado has been out since 2015 or 16 can imagine what a Colorado looks like. Yeah. <laughs> but, but with like bigger tires and a giant V8 with a supercharger yeah. wedge under the hood. Wow. Yeah. That's intense. That's a lot. Of, that would be a lot of truck. Um, I don't know if that kind of follows suit, you know. Yep. And the same thing with the TRX has, you know, right. the same transfer case as the, as yeah. the Trackhawk. Right. This just says they beefed up the 8L90E, uh, upgraded yeah. fuel system, CNC ported cylinder heads, aluminum block, forged internals. It doesn't say anything about the parts that like, are. Is this trying to shut down like 
Wrangler Ranger or Raptor Ranger, I should say, or anything like that, or kind of like put the foot in there, like, hey, listen, we're gonna. You know, it could. So, I mean, it says pricing is around eighty thousand dollars plus the Colorado, which you know, that's what a Raptor, a Bronco Raptor is going to cost after the dealers mark it up. (laughs) So, I don't know. This this seems like a Hennessy competitor type thing gotcha. speaking it, of, I, I saw one of those thousand horsepower hennessy trucks floating around oh, i might have to buy a new one <laughs> all right. with all our production money it's a write-off <laughs> good big good big um all right we're recording again yeah it as soon as i came back in we were recording again oh, so nice. okay the, the, the last thing i heard you say was i saw a hennessy and then it died on me so yeah. if you want to start was, there <laughs> yeah, that was the end of that story. <laughs> yeah, so, it was Greenwich, which is would be the spot for Greenwich. it to be. And that was it. Was which it? means that it'll. I mean, I can't say that anymore because, in in all fairness, you know, I I bashed like people who took off road trucks through and lived through in the city with them and whatnot, and then just used them on the weekends. And <laughs> here you are. So <laughs> <laughs> there you go, man. You know, I don't know. Did we say where you're from? Did that what, me? Yes. We so, just said Northeast. Just Northeast? Oh, okay. So why don't you give a, a quick 10 minute into the show introduction? Yeah. My name is Brett Pavasso. I am owner and operator of the custom shop in Astoria, Queens, New York City. We're a custom car shop. We're probably more heavy into the off-road overland stuff, you know, uh, over the past couple of years, but we, we do street cars still also. So um, yeah, that's where we're from. We're from Queens, New York, and we're lucky enough to get Ross's business to build his overland truck and a pretty wild spot to be for doing what I do but you know things happen and that's how kind of how it formed so it it looks like your shop is just like the perfect place because like (laughs) stuff like sports cars slammed to overland rig like that's just like heaven it's it's a cool spot um we yeah, we're lucky enough to have a pretty decent split. You know, we started out, you know, it, it's a very broad kind of name, right? It doesn't say like specifically we do this or that. It's just like a custom shop. It's a custom car shop. The reason why we made the name is because, you know, if you think about it, there's so many people that just go on Google and they're like custom car shop. So like <laughs> that's you know, SEO brilliance right there. Yeah, you know what I mean? So I thought that was pretty cool. But either way, you know, we didn't really know the direction it was going. Like, so I don't want to say like, I was specifically Euro or specifically this or that, you know, but we started out doing kind of all cars, all vehicles, all trucks. And we had a big foothold in like the Wrangler community because just by default, that truck is so customizable. Right. So we would get the most. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of people, when they just see that you do a bunch of Jeeps, they're all, oh, oh, you you do off-road trucks. Now, yeah, half of my guys were actually due to off-road and the other half were just like mall crawling, dude, just building street Mm -hmm. trucks. Cool. You know, it is what it is. I don't judge. Um, as long as the customer is happy. And I, I try to at least, you know, curate these builds in the cleanest way possible. So mm-hmm. you know, I don't know, we try, but um, yeah, we do get, we, we get a split for sure. Cause we're in New York city. You got to think about it. There's customers that come in, no shame. They're like, I'm going to spend all this bread. I want to hook this truck up. I will never go off road ever. You know? <laughs> okay. I do. I do want to throw it out there that there are some streets in and around the New York city area, yeah. that are probably worse condition than actual fire roads absolutely yeah i tell customers that all the time they're like oh you know i I just want a lift to fit some bigger wheels and tires make it look nice but i don't want anything crazy i don't need like a suspension lift i'm like listen dude like regardless of what you think you know smashing these potholes is not really you know too much different than like going down a trail so you're absolutely right um yeah but you know since pandemic and stuff and this whole boom i'm sure obviously you guys talk about this you guys know the deal and um we just started getting a lot more of the overland stuff, the self-guided adventure kind of vehicles and, and all that. So yeah, if you look at our page, I try to split it up, you know, sports car, this and that, but um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of heavy, heavy overland, you know, absolutely. So yeah, that's what I do. And that's why I'm here. So. It kind of fits a bill because the Northeast, like you got to travel to get somewhere yeah. to go off-roading regardless. So most oh, of yeah. the people who are like deep into heavy rock crawling or mudding, like they trailer their rigs, you know, right. for us normal people, we got to drive on the road and, theoretically driving some way from trailhead to trailhead absolutely so it's you know two in the same um so yeah so let's uh let's round out the news and then the other little shenanigans <laughs> real quick and then we'll dive deep into custom shop thanks man okay. so 
what I just discovered is I can't share my screen tonight because I did a software okay. update on the computer today. And it's like, you have to quit Zoom to be able to allow Zoom to have privacy access can to then record I your screen. Share my screen. I don't think so, but we can give it a shot if you want. to find out. Host has disabled participant See, screen Exactly. Sharing. And I was well, like, thank but you. I didn't. Bummer for the audio listeners today. All That's of them. Or the so video, video players. Watchers. So, um, okay. Last piece of news. I, if anybody has seen it or hasn't seen it, Texas Dave and the Rally Ready crew have created one of the strangest videos and most hysterical videos in recent memory, uh, kind of showcasing the, what is it? Black Rifle Coffee yeah. Company and Bucky Lassick's on board now. And it, it, it's basically an excuse to jump a Roush F-150. It's <laughs> It's Play with Texas, Technics. Yeah, it's Texas yeah. Dave being Texas Dave. Like it's yep. some good dude, driving in it too. He well, it's Dave driving. Like it's he's sliding that route. So yep. yep. Uh and there's a helicopter. Is it a there is? Is it an R44, R22? I'll tell you in a second when it turns sideways. Uh, I, the only things I know about helicopters is I know it's a Robinson like. and I know it starts with R. And if it's got the longer fuselage, it's a it's a 44. Got uh it. But they get that thing really close to that Roush. Like it's, yeah, it's, it's down there. Like it's they, and it looks like they're in a quarry. It looks like old Top Gear stuff. Like it looks like they were left alone to just do dumb shit and have so much fun. <laughs> yep, which is kind of what it sounds like they do every day. Yeah, that's um, so. Speaking of Texas Dave, he did come to mind the other day because my oldest gets his learning permit this summer, and I was like, maybe we swing through Austin and well, just let him learn car control with Dave for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so now I want to know, like, how young can I bring to him? Like, because it's, it's property in the middle of it, Texas. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, can I bring the 10 year old too? Like, can we throw him in stuff? Like, Here, here's my six year old. <laughs> yeah. Like, he's seven, but nice track. Let him loose. Uh, throw him in a razor and freaking yeah. sad. <laughs> but like, Sounds it's like a it. safe space there because it's guys who know what they're doing and vehicles that are prepped for stuff. Like, right. Dude, they have a dude dressed up like a Girl Scout cookie in this video. Just watch or, out for dogs. <laughs> the dude is not dressed up like a Girl Scout cookie. Oh, uh, Girl Scout. So, Girl Scout. Girl, Girl Scout. <laughs> That's a big difference. There's cookies yeah. in front of him. I need to turn that video off or I'm going to watch the rest of it. So. <laughs> we'll dude, put it in have... the show notes. It's, it's in the link. It's yeah. funny. You have driven so much stuff lately. I have, yeah. So, yeah, dude, I saw that list. It, it feels like it's been an eon since we last recorded. Um, so, I, I drove. Close to a full month. Yeah. Close to a full month. So, <laughs> I, I've had a lot of cars come through. So I'm going to do like the quick hits on all of them. All right. First one, 2022 Subaru WRX Limited. Uh, the reviews on Everyday Driver. Having owned the prior generation WRX, I didn't particularly like this one as much as I hoped. Um, there's no steering feel whatsoever, like worse than the prior one. The shifter was more rubbery than the BMW shifters I've driven recently. And given the, the, this might've been a pre-production car and it was definitely beaten on by other outlets. So I don't want to bash on it too hard. Um, it, it just felt dull. It felt heavy and dull. And especially in a world where there's like Veloster N and Elantra N and, you know, this new GR Corolla or whatever it is coming soon. Like yeah, GR86. Was yeah. It, this is a manual car you drove or no? Manual car. Yep. What yep. manual cars were rubbery from BMW that you drove recently? Probably like late 2010s three series. Okay. All right. Yeah. But like once upon a time, BMW made great shifters, you know? Sure, sure, sure. And this thing was just like, wait, I wasn't there. She went through about BMW Subaru right now. This well, is, we're comparing it. Okay. Yeah. Comparing, right. yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I got, um, I produced you know, for a moment and got lost. If you need like an all wheel drive car with a turbo and all wheel and um, a stick, cool. there's, not a ton of options. Yeah, that's it. Um, right. Golf R, man. Golf R, but price jump. So, I mean, the other thing is my WRX Limited that had almost every option I bought it in 2017, it was 31 grand. And this one was 37, wow. you know, for the same trim, which inflation, blah, blah, blah. But that's pretty substantial jump for something that gets then, worse gas mileage. Yeah. Well, um, and, but like 37, I, I, if you're still comparing like model to model, I can see it as a bigger jump, but like, what what do you cross shop with the WRX? Golf R at this point because there's no STI. But what's a Golf R? Isn't that 45? So like options. 
the 37 almost like i like that 35 to 40 zone like yeah like it's almost reasonable at 37 just because the next closest thing is at 45 like with nothing of the same ilk in that zone yeah yeah, like yeah you're right and i mean yeah i just and we we asked we, we had todd hill on from subaru of america and we were like so sti and he was like well i can't talk about it and then two <laughs> weeks later there is no sti there's a reason he couldn't talk so about it hard. it does not like, exist oh, yeah. <laughs> but that was that was part of the hope and ross's driving of the wrx was like well if the sti is coming and it's going to be better right then they, then i can accept the wrx more as it is but no this is the halo now like right. this and is the top yeah. you know the thing that really bugged me the most about it was that so it's a new engine. It's 2.4 instead of the two liter. And it, they got rid of like the torque dip and everything. But it gained, what was it, three horsepower or five horsepower and like okay. no torque. And it gained a little bit of weight. So it's better down low in like second if you're tooling around a parking lot or street or something. But it's, it doesn't feel faster. You know, right. I wonder. And I wonder we live in the world where every car gets faster or it gets more raw or it gets lighter. And right. keeps the same power and then gets faster because it's lighter. And right. Does it wasn't. fall into the category of like cross track where they're going to sell all of the WRXs yes. anyway? So, like, they're Absolutely. just like, just leave it out what it is, sell all of those. We'll try and improve on it. Like, BRZ is fucking great. <laughs> we talk about it every time because mm-hmm. I, it's great. Like, they, and it doesn't have a turbo and it doesn't have all wheel drive. Yeah. Or, and the one I drove was an automatic and I freaking love that even. Like, are, I just Chris, feel like the, the newer version you're talking about, or the, yeah, or, yeah, so it's like the G86, car. so the other, I get, the yeah, yeah, exactly. That's um, awesome. yeah, great car, dude. And that, like, price for right, oh, yeah, and it's just under the 37, like, it's like 35, 32 ish, like, it's nuts. Yeah, and I think the GR, I think the Toyota spec one is like 27 grand, 30 grand. I think, it, yeah, I think it's right around 30. Yeah, so, I would, the premium, yeah, so like. They're they're kind of doing this like balancing act of like that's almost more of a pure driving enthusiast car where the DB- WRX is like WRX people will buy it anyway so like right they're I don't want to say they're they sell themselves it. yeah but they 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 finished their work early and turned it in they didn't go back and double check <laughs> like well, and they're still going to get an edge because yes. they're going to sell every one of them so like 100%. yeah they kind of played it safe and seemed like they just kind of ported it over and right yeah. here and there but. I like the fact that you said that they should have went a little harder considering there wasn't going to be that next tier. Yeah. Well, I kind of wonder really if they went to the degree they went thinking there would still be an STI and then the STI got axed. And, and, and that's like, like, well, here it is. That absolutely could have been the case because it's like, like we're talking about like two to three year development times. Like, yeah. Probably more than anyway. that, you know, if, they're, if they were theoretically tooling up for like hybrid STI stuff. So yeah. anyways, moving on. Um, Let's talk so about the crazy rally one too. I mean, all this rally stuff, like WRC, is all like hybrid now, right? So yeah. it's, it's yeah, it's getting there. Suit. I mean, mm-hmm. fall is F one, you know. Yeah. Um, right. We'll talk about that. Right. Right. So the WRX left and was replaced by the CT four V Blackwing, <laughs> which is, you know, for an off road podcast, perfect. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I took the WRX down. It's not a rally stage, but it's like ten miles of dirt roads in Connecticut. Cool. So I didn't do that with the Cadillac. Why not? <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Should have. It would have been very slidey. So CT4V Blackwing is basically like an updated ATSV. Right. A um, little more power. It's actually less expensive than the ATSV. So it starts at 59. The ATSV started at 60. And, you know, it's five, four years on from the ATSV. Yeah. Uh, it is, it's a good size car. Um, the back seats are a little tight, you know, for people, but like, it's fine. Because right. the same chassis is also the Camaro, which the, the backseat just doesn't exist. Right. Um, or windows. Or windows. Or the ability to like see anything I, except. I tracked with my buddy and I couldn't hand him his helmet. It wouldn't go through the window. <laughs> Wait, hold on. <laughs> like the full driver's driver side window? Yeah, dude, sideways, straight. I swear. Like, <laughs> a fifth gen or a sixth gen? Give me my helmet. I'm going out for this next heat. And I was like, all right, cool. And I was like, thud. I was like, all right. <laughs> thud. I was like, <laughs> I mean, follow up question: How big is the guy's head? I mean, dude. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but um, imagine what if you have to like bail out that window? <laughs> like, you know, yeah. like, <laughs> with your helmet on, you got to take your helmet right. off first. Know. Funky, you know. Feet, feet out first. Just leave your right. head in. <laughs> right, right, right. So, 
like pop yeah. out of it as you <laughs> <laughs> spaghettification. <laughs> uh, the CT four V Black Wing is the best. It's just it is just the chassis is amazing. Well, It'll well. do anything you want. The shifter, the actual gearbox itself is like perfect. It's the best shifter I've ever experienced. Wow. Um, it's a V six that actually sounds good. Is and it a V six? Yeah, it's twin turbo V six. You can get a four cylinder version as well, right? Mm. There's Isn't a there four-cylinder. It's not a black wing. It's just a CT4 V. They fucked up the naming, but yeah, it's funky. But that's but cool. this thing, dude. This thing, it rips. It's so fast. It's so deceptively fast. Like you're always going, you know, deep wow. double digits faster than you expected. Allegedly, or like thought allegedly. Um, I, I peeped it. On, I mean, after you had it in that list, I checked a little more into it, and like on the website, it had said that. That twin turbo V6 was an exclusive Cadillac motor. Like they don't use that in any uh, other VM model. I think so. That's pretty cool. But it, it you know, the ATSV sounded terrible, but this thing actually has like a good sound to it. And I it's just that. it's just perfect. The car's just perfect. Like you could drive it across the country or you could put it on a track and it would it would be great in anything. Wow. So they nailed it. And price point's pretty decent too, right? Wasn't it like 50K or something? 59 to get in the door. And uh, the one I had was loaded up with like all the carbon packages, 76, Mm -hmm. but. Yeah. So you could have a nice one for like upper 60s. You could have a nice one for for 62. So Brett, my my running joke is that 50 is the new 35. (laughs) I, so, dude, I agree. so to me like mid like, and it's so awful to think like mid 60s it's not that bad like yeah but it seems reasonable <laughs> like i feel like when we were younger like 30k was like a soup like that's a luxury car right that was right. like the great oh, God. Car it's like 30k like is like a civic now it's like <laughs> i mean civic is pretty nice but like oh no beautiful i don't but i'm saying it's a very it's an it's an entry-level model yeah. and like in the spec of that's why record. when we were talking about Subarus being in the 30s and the 20s we're that's like true. this is so fucking great <laughs> like because it, it went from price creep to like price leap yeah, <laughs> yeah. um like that. how much was like an e46 m3 when it was new in 2004 2003 50 and 60 was it really yeah was it yeah i, I, the one, like I drove an m3 in like 2012 that was like sixty seven thousand dollars um, that was 2012 that was I, right i know but like or the 90 but then like a, oh, just a regular three series was like 35 like so six five yeah like wow. it's not okay time anyway time, time moves on ross like you're getting that's, older buddy yeah so and you know that's the thing and this is a good segue the uh the ct4v blackwing is supposedly with the ct5v blackwing the last two gas powered blackwing or v-badged cars you know, so it's kind of like swan song. Right. Uh, if, if you buy one today, it'll be worth more tomorrow. You know, they're so good. It's It was just, it was the best. Um, it's almost any car you buy right now. Though. We're that, still is that, weird that is true. Buy a car today, it's going to be worth more tomorrow. Like, right. Yeah. And I'm sure and then, uh, bring the manual spec is pretty cool too, because you'd have the last like petrol and manual. You know what I mean? That's really yeah. bad. And the shifter's so good. That's so like, cool. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, it is it a ZF box or what is it? No, it's a TR6060. So Tremec? Yes. Oh, okay. That's fine. Wow, that's awesome. Tremec. I love, love Tremec. Like, yeah. It's got to be a, got a Tremec. You know, yeah. 6060. Oh, shit. <laughs> I don't want a purse shifter. I want a Tremec. It's a, yeah, it's a TR6060. Okay. Which is, you did a good job there. Everything. It's so cool. Yes. I feel like that, that style car is such like a, like a German owned segment, right? The manual saloon. M3. You know I mean? that, like, that's so cool, dude. Rear that, wheel drive. You know what I mean? That's, <laughs> yep. I just love that. I, I, you know, I love that Cadillac can, can be in that segment and do so well. It's badass. You know what I mean? Well, they, Killing it too. Yeah, they're, like, they're almost alone with like a rear wheel drive perform. Other, I mean, like, yes, M3. BMW still has the M cars, yeah. but like mm-hmm. the M series isn't what it used to be. So like there's room for the black wing to sell a lot. Yeah. I don't think I, the M cars are what they used to be, Ross. Sorry. Door, if you're looking for four door manual, yeah, FR design. I mean, mm-hmm. it's M3 and it's this CT4V, right? But, yeah, pretty much. Or the or the five, which or the five, yes, or the five. But then, but again, that's a bigger motor too, though, right? You can. Yeah, it's a six point two liter with a like, yeah one point eight liter supercharger well, or that's something. More that's more in the M5 territory, no? Yeah, it's M5 size. Yeah. But M5 can take a manual, so. Sure. 
you know that's true that's badass though these these yeah. cadillacs are that's really cool dude. it was amazing um it makes me hope I, that you like it so much that's badass it was great and i have i, I was hoping i'd get a, some seat time in an m3 but i have an m4 comp coming in a few weeks so get a little <laughs> comparison on <laughs> that is. so nice. Yeah. Our, anyways, channel's, our channel's changing. We're just going all sports cars. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's all sports cars. Yeah. <laughs> Not really, no. Our guy shit, dude, because I'm so I'm sure you have so many listeners out there. Look, a lot of these guys, like, if you can afford the overland stuff and the off-road stuff, like, you know. There's crossover. Like, there is. There's crossover there. I, I, so, I have a lot of my customers are that half and half, you know? Yeah. So, I, car I, people can talk about car shit regardless of what it is right. like forever you know sorry until you get to rotaries i'm out on rotaries i just don't <laughs> care i they're cool i get it it's unique it's weird i'm out sorry i don't want to hear about your apex seals like i am out <laughs> I, maybe i know a little too much about it but uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna send you an apex seal for christmas <laughs> why <laughs> uh so anyways um like, let's just automatic rx8 for christmas That's oh my God. <laughs> you, know what, you know what fits great in the front of an rx8 an ls motor yeah it does <laughs> there you go yes you want to suicide doors <laughs> those things are so weird okay uh just just bullet pointing on the next few uh kia telluride excellent really truly good vehicle uh the interior is great the engines meh yeah, but like it, it doesn't it, need to be anything more than that. Exactly. Yeah. It's right. a it's a people mover. Like it's not they did they haven't done an off-road version of it. They haven't done a okay. like sporty version of it. It is a people mover. It's very good at that. And it's not bad. It's no, it's really good. good. Really like it. I will say the Kia product that I want my hands on though is I want a carnival. I need Kia to send me a carnival. Like let me carnival. have one. Because there are auto journalists who don't have children that are like who can i adopt so i can buy i was like you could just buy the minivan i'm sorry the mpv it's a it's a multi-purpose vehicle again right. you could just go buy the carnival you don't have to have children you don't have to justify your car purchase like, right you can just be you know yeah just you can just life. enjoy what you like it's okay just live your life exactly no so, one's gonna notice another minivan in traffic mpv sorry god <laughs> they're not gonna give it to me now now, now you're, you're on the shit list. Yeah. So, so that was very good. Uh, the, the M440i Grand Coupe was actually surprisingly good. How uh, much snow did you drive it through? I drove it through a lot of snow. Drove it up to <laughs> like a town outside Gore, um, a ski mountain for a bachelor party, the weekend of the bomb cyclone. And oh, wow. we went out during the blizzard. It was amazing. Um, it was on snow tires. And it, it's I didn't know it's a mild hybrid. So oh, below yeah. five miles per hour, it like shuts down and runs an electric. And, you know, it's like one of those 48 volt hybrid systems. So nice. it has like an alternator that basically can run the car. Um, so you did snow skids? A little yeah. bit. Okay. <laughs> I didn't want to crash the expensive <laughs> car that I was very happy right. and, and very grateful. That it was for still working well. Yeah. Enough. I saw some sketchy driving in the snow up there. Like people trying to brake and turn at the same time and the car just keeps going. <laughs> it's like, oh boy. Um, Hope for the best. Yeah, so yeah, that was very good. Go. How fast was, you can yeah. stop. I, I, I far prefer the vertical grill on the M versions over the, you know, 440s or 430s. Mm -hmm. yeah. You do not prefer them at all, Chris? Is that what? I don't like modern BMW. The aesthetic <laughs> is awful. I'm sorry. Oh, man. And, but, and, and looks are completely subjective. Like, we can go stare at artwork and have completely okay. different takes on it. Like, okay. I, I, I don't really harp on car aesthetics that I much will. because of that. But I modern BMWs do not do it for with, me. I wasn't a huge fan of the way the current cars look. And then this one showed up and I looked at it more. Like, instead of just glancing at it and looking away. Yeah. It's not bad. Like, not you bad. get used to it. Yeah, you know, it's a modern take on what used to be classic and of course amazing. Of course, right? <laughs> it was very good to drive, which was a nice surprise. Yeah, it's a B58 motor, I think, in that car, right? The 440s, it's a great motor. Was it BMW the... engine codes to me are just like well, that's the, the inline six motor. turbo, like that's yes. what they put in the newer Supra because who else was making an inline six forced induction since the 2JZ, right? I guess BMW, nobody. I mean, it's maybe literally, you know, so Mazda's. No, they Mazda killed it. They announced I, that they killed the inline six in the rear wheel drive platform. Hmm. Oh, I thought they just came out and said that's what they were going to do. Mazda? Yep. Yeah. Mazda was supposedly developing a rear wheel drive 
platform, like a scalable platform that they could use for some crossovers and for a sports sedan oh, with an inline six, and they killed it. It was rear wheel drive, dead. I need to actually click through and read some articles. Um, oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> So then this past weekend, I drove a Kia Forte GT up to Maine, put like 600 miles on it. Good rally cross car? It would be a great yeah. rally cross car, <laughs> except it doesn't have an actual handbrake. It, it's an uh, electronic handbrake. Yeah. So, um, oh, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, you know, if, you know, it was good. We did 600 miles, it got 36 miles per gallon. Like, that's pretty good. It's respectable. If you're doing the mileage first, it's like, all right. <laughs> it didn't break down. It was comfortable. Like I it went was... to this restaurant. They had like really good bread. It was... <laughs> <laughs> you know, like... The water was cold and the it's bread. It's the Olive Garden of <laughs> sports sedan. Great. Let me yeah. tell you. You know, it's like, all right. <laughs> exactly. All right. I mean to cut you off. Uh, they had nice. <laughs> I really like their napkins. No, um, Brett's, Brett's got so, the code for Ross Car Reviews. Like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I mean, not much great to say. You know, the engine sounds like marbles in a coffee can, and Ooh. it's mm. it's just underwhelming. It's a ton of shit on this car for twenty five grand or so. You know, it has radar cruise control, and it's got heated and cooled seats, and sunroof, and CarPlay, and all that stuff. But it's just like entry level. It's it's got the same red trim as like the Veloster N and the Elantra N, okay. but it's not even remotely in the same ballpark as that. Right. So. I think William just had the Elantra end down there in DC and he, Howdy. dude, he, he did a startup video and I was like, I'm sorry. Is that, was that an Elantra? Like it sounded <laughs> great. Like nice. it was so good. Yeah. What so, is that? The same power plan as like the Veloster end, I guess. Yeah, I think so, so. Yeah. Those, those, those rip, dude. Those are great. Yeah. Those are rowdy. So then in, in terms of uh, going slow news, I did off-road the GX nice. and it did really, really, really well. Um, again no this is the, we haven't talked about the first probably one wouldn't be here if it didn't so yeah that is true <laughs> <laughs> we did we did talk about it with Camille. like yeah oh you're talking about breaking through ice sliding down mud. Yeah, i edited yeah. that whole show last well, night well for it. brett since uh, i don't know <laughs> yeah if I tell brett about it he's the one to put it all together yeah, <laughs> brett was the one who saw the freaking build of the thing so it did really really well i need to nice. learn the tire pressures that work for the yeah. weight of the truck Mm-hmm. Um, but it was, you know, super stable. It was so slick and so muddy. And, it, and it, the only time that there was any loss of traction was like just going down a, a slick hill sure. where the, the mud just like, compacted or yeah, maybe- it just stuck in the, they're not mud tires. You know, the Toyos right. are great tires, but they're right. not mud tires. Right. Um, and especially when you're going downhill on the brakes, like it doesn't have any way to eject the mud that's sure. in there. Yeah. So it did great. Got stuck. Used the winch, you know, just got beached on some ice and was like i don't want to kill these tires like first time it was <laughs> yeah um but yeah man it was it was really 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 solid and How did the foam cells feel uh i mean it felt like it was on stock suspension with better rebound you know awesome. versus most of the off-road suspensions i've had experience with sound like it feels like you got you know pucks and springs yeah oh, so that's great. it yeah. wrote great i had like heated and cooled seats going at different times because it, it was freezing when we started and it got like i mean let me rephrase i got really sweaty when i realized how out of shit i how of shape i am <laughs> climbing up a hill back to the truck after we had a little recovery situation wow. um, but yeah no the truck's great the suspension's great you know the, the tires are great the whole thing came together amazing awesome, man. Um, so yeah How's again thanks to you and the team for Thanks, to work on thanks, it. thanks to you too. Give us the opportunity. That was wonderful. And, and the parts you went with were like A1. So, you know, that's the other thing too. You know, it's about getting the good, you know, the good ingredients for the recipe and then do it once and do it right. Yeah, that's right. But yeah, your, your truck's beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah. It gets compliments everywhere. Like, it's I was looking it, at the photo today that we took in front of the shop. I was like, wow, that's a gorgeous truck. Yeah. And, uh, and we got more stuff coming. So, nice. we'll, oh, looking forward to it. We'll talk on the side. Got some other stuff. Okay. But All right. That'll, for another episode right? it, kind of great, but it, it helps that the shop's aesthetic blends perfectly with the it truck does. Too. Oh like gray God, brick with the white yeah. sign like it looks great yeah. with Thanks. the truck in front of it our building used to be uh blue and okay. i just i was you know i would take photos in front of the shop all the time and, and blue is a very hard color to work with right when you're kind of editing photos a lot of times you actually want to remove the blue from a lot of the stuff 
And uh, I said one day, you know, and I was like, fuck this. And we repainted it. And, you know, I did a very neutral color. So, yeah, I thought, you know, I thought it looked good. But thank you, Chris. I appreciate that, man. Uh, I, it's literally why we painted it that way. So it would be a better backdrop for, you know, photos in front of the shop. So. Especially if, like, the the, like, the cars that are brighter colors pop even harder than, like, they, Yeah, yeah. It's, it's great. That's true. Thanks, That's true. man. Thank you so much. That's yeah. great. Awesome. So, Chris, you want to talk about Suburban? I, I've been teasing it for weeks now. I finally, I, I ordered it, it came, and, and then eventually I got to go down to uh, my buddy Ron's house. Uh, he was about two and a half hours away from me, and he was like, bring it down here, we'll put it on. And I was like, all right, if you're offering labor, yes, I will be there. Um, so I went down there, and uh, a couple of the other guys from like the, the off-road group that I, we have a group chat that probably, if you hear my phone uh, vibrate, it's probably them. Nice. Um, they know they know when they're being talked about. Spidey um, senses were tingling. <laughs> yeah, and it's one of the reasons I appreciate the group so much is like Ron is a Land Rover guy. He used to send me photos every time he would pass a Land Cruiser of himself giving the Land Cruiser the finger, and I would send <laughs> him photos every time I would pass a Land Rover of myself giving the Land Rover the finger. It's a great game to play, except when you live in the county I live in, which is. Uh, surrounded by land rovers and so i'm constantly giving the finger in traffic and i was like all right Ron, we need to slow this game down because yeah. <laughs> he lives in some toyotas but i live near all of the land rovers in Canada. that ends very differently differently for you than it does for him correct yes like i'm i don't want to get shot in traffic so um because it's also the midwest and there are guns uh <laughs> but we went down to ron's house uh Brett showed up in his 100 series land cruiser kyle eventually showed up on his uh i don't even i think it's a ktm adventure bike cool but he normally runs a 900 or something do what like a 900 no bigger i want to say i heard the phrase 450 thrown yeah. around yeah. Oh, yeah. and it might even be 250 yeah the most smaller in that displacement zone yeah yeah because they were they were talking about like smaller displacement bikes that they could then throw on the back of their trucks and stuff and then like rip around so um you gotta love the midwest we got room for stuff nice. um <laughs> But no, it, the, so I, I, I did a leveling kit. So it was two and a half. Uh, so it was a metal bracket and some plastic spacers in the front. And then it was just like a solid inch metal disc in the back. Um, yeah. And it went on, I got there around nine ish and we were done by lunch. So I bought everybody lunch, yep. except for Kyle. He didn't show up to do the work. So sorry, Kyle show up. A little, I gave him like three tater tots or I paid for three tater tots. <laughs> um, <laughs> you paid for three tater tots. I didn't really do that. Um, but like, it was nice to see guys that I hadn't seen in a while. It went on super easy. I'm just, I would absolutely be sharing images of it right now. I'm super happy with the way it looks right now. The, the, I think I, the picture I sent to Ross was like of a Red Bull Formula One car with like the front end super low yeah. and the back end super high, like full yeah. rake. Like, cause that's the way I felt the Suburban looked. Yeah. Last year's Formula yeah. One car. Not the yeah. Year. Last, no, no, last year. Not the one that doesn't have fuel, fuel, fuel pump issues. Um, <laughs> but it's it sits up higher in the front now and it's not it's not terrible what i was a little concerned about was like fully loaded how will it look like Swat. is it gonna sag in the back but like the kit i used maintains uh the the magna ride shocks uh and it maintains the the right height leveling in the back so oh nice because i i could still hear it move i could hear it going Arr, like in the back every time <laughs> the, the kids compressor get yeah yeah is it a compressor and i know what it is um, I should probably learn these things, but it it's working. It looks good. Yeah, if it's hydraulic, then no. But like it's, yeah. But what there's like a like an air helper. Like there's a bag back there that adjusts. I think there is. I think there's yeah, a right. Probably would be air because you yeah. would just get like, you know, anything hydraulic like would be maybe for like like dampening or like you know having right. to do shock. So yeah, and it's probably be in the the spring itself is probably a bag. Yeah. Yeah, it's like you throw a bunch of stuff in the back and turn it on and then it goes yeah, to nice. level. So like yeah um that is literally the sound oh, of things <laughs> yeah you're making that noise regularly now <laughs> yep uh we don't do fun social media clips or else, so good luck with that and i control the oh. video uh, <laughs> i know you have ways to get it um but yeah I, I i took it on a little route that is one of the more acceptable like we don't we don't have trails here we have minimum maintenance roads which right. the count the counties don't maintain right. um and every, you can always tell when a new person has joined like the Facebook group, they're like, so what trails are there? And we're like, well, there are none. <laughs> um, we have these routes that we generally all accept that when it's raining, we don't go on them because you ruin it. Um, 
right. some guys go anyway. Um, but so I just ran it through uh, one of those real quick and I absolutely had a blast because it sits so much higher now in the front. Like it's, it's still got that lower splitter there, that lower air dam that drives me nuts. I have yet to hit it again. The only thing I've hit it on recently is a snowbank, and I don't think that counts because that's like way like it, I'd hit anything on a yeah. snowbank basically. Yeah. So um, I'm kind of sad that the dumb computer won't let me share pictures because I I like the way it looks. So, Go to Chris's Instagram for. People I did put it on the. I think it's on the podcast Instagram too. Like I think I definitely did both of those. Probably. I better have done both of those. It looks good. It, it looks like the way the suburban should look. It so. it it has me like, I'm definitely hunting for a skid plate now. Like I definitely want uh, uh, that Z71 skid plate, which I'm not supposed to be able to use because the way my premier bumper is or the front bumper cover, um, there's more plastic in the middle of it. I'm like, I'm just going to buy a Z71 skid plate and we'll figure it out. Like I'm going to, I'll cut some plastic out. I don't get shit anymore. Bumpers for a Prado and look at him. He's out here. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I I didn't cut up a Lexus though. Like that's different. (laughs) It's, different. <laughs> it's ultimately a piece of metal and plastic and fancier synthetic things that's true <laughs> uh but no it's it i definitely will take it like when we were in glacier last summer i didn't drive up a road because it said it was a rough road and i was worried about clearance and yeah, yeah i'm not worried about that anymore like it okay. it, it i i'm still not going to do anything like nuts with it because it literally is the thing that holds all of us like yeah no you can't yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. but like it's it's, it's too rig, rig. it could be you know yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i still need to find some tow hooks for the front and just get home. yeah yeah yep. and right. then get the sticker that says remember stupid you have to drive this home so nice man <laughs> true true ribbon's beautiful truck beautiful truck yep I had a customer pull up in a brand new red escalade yesterday it was gorgeous which i know oh yeah. escalade i mean the, the color was i've never really Usually see in black, white at least, you know, but like a red, like beautiful red. Oh, well, and it's it's I a know which rich, it's almost about. like a blood red. Like it's that was great. Um, I had that Tahoe RST for a week. That was that color. Oh, nice. It was like it was red. Yeah, like, I thought it was great. Like the way the sun hit it, I was like, holy shit, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that was a nice like, color. It gave a really sporty look to to the Escalade that I thought was really nice. <laughs> to a truck that weighs sixty five hundred pounds. Really cool. and cost ninety grand. Right. Right. <laughs> that. Nuts. That's only that one that Zach and those guys had a UTV driver. I don't that think they regularly so six expensive. figures. Yeah, that was like one hundred and eight thousand dollars. No, it was like one fourteen or something. Pretty sure it was one oh eight. That was no the Jeep that I had was one oh eight. Oh, okay, that's why. <laughs> that was the Obsidian one. That was the Obsidian one. Wow. Those things haven't gotten better. Looking. Anyways, all right, Brett. So, Yo. so we we. Dug a little into the background of the custom shop before, but like, what's the actual history? When did it, when did you guys start it? When did you start it? You know, how did you get into this? What's your, I mean, it's basically kind of like, you know, sum it up, but just give you the kind of the gist of it. Um, I worked at another shop in Queens prior to that. So we started in 2014. So, you know, it's been a few years now, right? About eight years. Yeah. Closing in on 10, bud. Yeah, closing in on 10. <laughs> yeah. Your mark was a big thing to pass because I mean, that's kind of like, you know, like shit. All right, if we can get past the five, we're okay. We built the customer basis, all that stuff. So it worked out. Um, so that was cool. It definitely, after the five year mark, not that it got easier, but like the problems weren't like so much oriented, like staying open. Now it shifted to other things, right? So the heating cool. issues had worked themselves out by then. Right. Um, you know, but yeah, we started in 2014. But uh, prior to that, I had worked in another shop in Queens. And I was, I did like account, I was a salesman. So I would work the counter, I'd sell parts and, you know, help people out and stuff. I have somewhat of a mechanical background. I mean, all, all enthusiast and hobbyist. Like I never worked in a shop as a mechanic, but I've always done work on cars, buddies, cars is how we grew up. So, you know, I can turn a wrench. I'm not like the guys that work for me, but pretty decent. So anyway, I had a counter job at this, at the speed shop. And, um, I did pretty well there. There was a couple other salesmen there that were like a little older and they were a little jaded. And, you know, I don't know, I had, I was younger. I had this kind of fire. So I was was doing really well. Now the gentleman who owned that, that speed shop also owned the building. So he was owner and I guess landlord of himself. Right. So he was the owner of the building. So he didn't pay rent, nothing like that. Yes. Well, he pays himself. It goes from the corporate account to the personal account. (laughs) There you go. So he is also, you know, he's a dude that, you know, he's into the car thing. He has the speed shop. He was my boss. I was working for him, but 
in the years that he was building that business up and he's had that shop since like the late eighties. So through the nineties and early two thousands, like if you had a speed shop, like, come on, dude. Like, yeah. That was the boom. Like that was it. You know what the I mean? Fast and, and furious boom. All that stuff, no internet. You know what I mean? Like there's no way to check prices. It was just like, <laughs> look at it now. you're paying $700 for this vibrant muffler. You know what I mean? Right, right. Yeah. You know, in places like that could stock more parts too, because there was less models back then, dude. It was like in the yeah. late 80s, it's like 5.0, IROC, you know, and it's like, okay, wow. so you stock a couple of exhausts and it works out, right? So magnet flows yeah. here and there. So, yeah. you know, I mean, that's that's another thing about how the industry changed. But um, yeah, so I worked at a shop, I did really well. And um, my, my boss, who again owned that building, he owned a few other buildings in the Queens area that he rented and things like that. So when he came to this money through, his shop, I guess he invested in real estate. He had a small shop in Astoria, um, the one, the custom shop that we're at now. And, you know, I was uh, working at this other shop and he actually gave me the opportunity. He's like, listen, he was like, yo, if you want, I bought this building. He was like, if you want to jump in there and like start a shop, he was like, I think you can do this. You know what I mean? Wow. And I was like, dude, I really don't have like much money or anything like that. You know what I mean? He's yeah. like, it's cool. He was like, yo, just whatever you got, you know, let's do this, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm like, oh shit, I don't know. You know, and I, uh, Cool thing was, is that one of the technicians who worked in the back, who would do the installs, he was probably about maybe 12 or 15 years older than me. And I would always love when I would take my job to the back of the shop. And then this guy, Anon, my partner now at this shop, he, he would get this job, you know, and I knew that it would come out good because he was a great installer. So when this kind of came up, this talk about going to another shop and everything, Anon was like already... You know, it's already in, you know, so <laughs> yeah. kind of like we jump ship together kind of thing, you know, um, okay. that actually went first. So since my, my boss at the, that current shop was in the speed shop world, he kind of went to that next place and like with a non started to like furnish and show him like the ropes on how to do it. And then I kind of just, you know, left this place and jump ship over there. Okay. So we were friendly, the two shops, because we were kind of under the rule of this one landlord so like we kind of like worked as like a family between two places a little bit you know and um and that was it dude and like we started there uh, about eight years ago and you know a couple of clients that i helped out in that first place followed me i wasn't standing in front of the old shop with like a, a sign like hey like an know, arrow <laughs> in and out business cards <laughs> under the table yeah. but we started very humble and it's still you know we're still very humble and we're very blessed but we started out with like hardly any customers and just it was a good time for like Instagram and social media. And there wasn't as many, like, I want to say like the algorithm was a little easier and it was kind of seemed like you were able to get out there a little more. Mm -hmm. And I had a really good friend, man. His name is Sean. I had, I still do. He's one of my best buddies. His name is Sean. <laughs> Shout out to Sean if he sees this. And he had bought a, a Wrangler at the time and wanted to do this big build on this Wrangler. And he waited for like me to get to this next shop. That's and awesome. then he came there and like, we started out with this truck and like, it was right. like a $25,000 bill, $30,000 bill. This guy went in and like, boom, we put this truck on the map and like, people are like, oh shit. And like the way we styled it and we made a video around it and photos and it kind of just started bubbling from there. I was always big in like the German car world, Volkswagen, BMW. So I had a lot of buddies who would come through for work and it just bubbled from there, man. But I actually, yeah, my partner is, is Anon who I worked with at the shop prior and, uh, yeah, that's where we are, man. So that's how it started. Um, that's amazing. That's a hell of an opportunity. Shot. I was like, listen, like, what's going to happen if this fails? Like, I'm, I'm, like, I, you know, no one's going to like kill me. Like, big you, fucking right. tried, you know, like I. You go you know, back and work at the speed shop? Yeah. That's it. No, not, <laughs> not anymore, but like. <laughs> I, could, I could, right. I could do yeah. that. Or I could work for like a vendor or something, you know. Then the idea was to like, you know, work, work it through the shop and pay him the rent and all this stuff. And like, you know, it worked out really well. So I, I definitely had had a boost there you know which was cool you know my landlord was a really cool dude he saw something in me and uh and gave me the shot so that's that's wild that's a story you never hear you know? yeah yeah it's, usually yeah. it's like a huge rift and somebody goes out on their own and it's right like warfare yeah like, man it, that's that's awesome i didn't know that yeah it was cool i mean the other guys like they weren't too happy that we left that other shop because we we're <laughs> pretty decent salesmen and, and an installer obviously but you know you have to do your own thing man you want to you want to do for you and you know yeah. I mean, I'm not stepping on too many toes if like the business owner from one spot was like, hey, try it in this spot. So <laughs> you know, big fucking deal, you know, so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Were you always in cars like from childhood or was it yeah. kind of 
always, always. Okay. My, my father was a math teacher. My mom stayed at home. Um, and then she was a, she worked in like a board of ed with special ed kids for a while. And like, so we didn't like have like crazy money. Like my parents never had like really cool cars. Mom, my growing up, my dad had an 85 Voyager, with like the wood paneling, Plymouth Voyager, you know, that was, he bought my mom like an, like an 89 Pontiac Le Mans or something like, Oh my gosh. Like, you know, yeah, it was like, uh. it was really, you know, but, my, but my father loved cars growing up. He had a Triumph TR3. My, my awesome. father he was born in 45 so okay. like you know 77 right now you know yep. almost yes uh, yeah so he's an older dude but he so he's he's been around cars for a while but yeah one of the cars he would always speak speak about so passionately was his triumph tr3 which was awesome he would talk about how you could sit in the car and actually just stick your hand out the door and touch the ground and yeah those you physically have to remove and replace it was just such a pure roadster he loved it and uh, he lived in Brooklyn, you know, in Bensonhurst, and he would repair it on the street. He would pull out the gearbox and bring it somewhere and have the synchros and stuff redone and put it all together. It was just really cool. So I always thought that that was, that was awesome. And we spent a lot of time in doing Legos or like, you know, servicing his, his van and stuff. We were always very hands-on. So I don't know if that's where it came from. Um, but he always loved uh, German cars. He always loved BMW. He never had one. He actually just ordered one, man. At, nice. A few, a few months ago, he ordered Good it. for him. Yeah, an X3 M40i he ordered. Okay. So, yeah. They, so they really, make good sounds. Yeah, definitely. It's a good car. But um, I was really happy for him. I took him to the dealer and he ordered it up. But yeah, he would always talk very, very highly of BMW. And he was like, yo, he loves all cars. But he's like, you know, German cars. He, he absolutely loved them. Mm -hmm. He also loved tires. When we would be in the car, it could be the most shit car ever. If it had a nice set of tires and they were wide and like they hugged the road right and they sat along the fender right, he would always point it out. So yeah, there was a lot of that influence um, always, you know, for sure. And, you know, mm -hmm. we grew up in a good time for, for cars, you know, and yeah, for sure. so I was always the car and driver guy. And, you know, that was what I read and it wasn't much internet and shit like that when I was a kid uh, or any at all. Yeah. And um, yeah, it was just kind of the magazines and you know, when you go to the supermarket, you look for the magazines and you, while your mom's shopping and you look in, you know, and, and that was it, man. And we just, we loved it. You know, I, I grew up in Rockaway beach and Queens is very like surf skate oriented kind of town. Like there wasn't many kids into cars at all. Not on that Island. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah not well, right. I never knew kids with cars really. Like even when we got to the level of like, you know, having a license, like you didn't you know many people, you know, with that stuff. So it wasn't very, like yeah. predominant in my neighborhood and there's other Rockaway neighborhoods is like you know it's like new york's venice you know i mean <laughs> i mean that's just a your compliment I mean, you know, for sure. so yeah. my my wife's family had a place in rockaway so hell yeah man um her uncle was a firefighter on uh, the holloway house for years there you go like years holloway holloway house yeah i think that's the right house now i'm about to look it up because i'm gonna be wrong or maybe Hamels, maybe the Hamels house. Uh, I don't know. Could it's be. But H. Okay. All right. 266 so, I mean, was the engine. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I got that right. Yeah, it's a, it was a cool spot. But yeah, that that's pretty much, yeah, always into cars, dude. Always into cars. Okay. Always, always into off-roading or, or kind of um, started with German first, stuff? and. Yeah, first into cars. And then really, I living in Rockaway, there's a very small like little beach you can actually drive out in the fishing beach where you would go off to fish and you can drive on the sand out there and in starting the shop i would just always drive out there in a four by four and just like take cool video clips just because i thought it was good content because where the fuck in new york city are you ever gonna can i curse on this channel i'm sorry yeah, same yeah, whatever the fuck you <laughs> so where you know where the hell you know you're driving like it was just cool and people would be like where are you what's the deal and then again in that kind of wave of us doing a lot of those wranglers and me kind of doing this people started to show more interest and i would get larger builds and people more serious about off-roading and then kind of my you know love for it kind of grew as well so it was there um i was always a camper i'm always an outdoors guy I, i'm sleeping in my car before it was a thing i guess you know what i mean so, yeah, <laughs> before it had a name for it right yeah. right exactly yeah. it was and, just car camping <laughs> right it was, it was it was just really really cool i i, I always enjoyed that kind of like vagabondy kind of lifestyle because you, you lust to get out a lot when you're in new york city that grind you're just like dude i'll fucking go anywhere like i just want to get out of here you know so i was always venturing to these cool places you know to just camp for a night or two and and it was always just a thing. But yeah, I kind of grew with the hobby with the clients as well. It was kind of cool. Yeah. You know, so met a lot yeah. of people through it as well. So the Montero, your first four by four? Um, no, I've had two XJs. 
Okay. Um, I mean, it is four wheel drive, but not really a four wheel drive. <laughs> Thousand. I forget what it was. Mitsubishi Montero. No, Mitsubishi Outlander Sport. Oh wow. Oh. Me and my wife needed something super that. cheap and reliable. It was like the cheapest car ever. We were like, hell yeah, that four wheel drive. And like, and we would take that on the beach sometimes and cruise and stuff, but that was short lived. What's but, um, worse? I yeah. definitely, definitely was cussing at one of those in Colorado last week. <laughs> like, Get out of the snow. You don't know what you're doing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Out of the it, way. Was, it was all right. But um, yeah, the Montero was probably, uh, you know, probably the, the best rig I've had so far yeah. as far as this so, weird platform, but I, I tend to, to like to drive something a little more. It's definitely unique and not like the mainstream. No. It's not a third gen or fourth gen or fifth gen forerunner. No, you know, which no, not at all. I Truthfully, I like, you know, I, I love Land I love Land Cruiser. I think it's it's a cool platform, but I just couldn't afford or stomach like 20K for a 250,000 mile vehicle. And like, I don't care how great they are. It was awesome. But like, I just, I couldn't do it. You know, I just, I couldn't yeah, do it. I was like, what, what has like a third row? What, what's something that's like large. I can either, if I plan on camping inside of it, I can, if I, I want to camp on top of it, I can, you know, what's it going to be? So I, I did a lot of research and I was like, shit, this is pretty cool. I mean, these cars now they're very hard to get parts. They're very hard to find the truck period, but the price point to start is like awesome. Like the truck was like 3,500 bucks, dude. You know I was going to say like three to seven is it, yeah, right? Like, yeah, that's I mean, now they're a little higher. There's one dude in Cali that has a really nice one. And he like, he has this popular Instagram and he's like this real kind of like this dude in the scene that like you kind of, I don't know, you can ask him like for connections for parts. And he's just a really good dude mm-hmm. who like really helps out in the scene. And, um, you know, he had one that he sold just now for about uh, 15,000. So, crap. okay. You know, and so just creep it up that yeah. would actually bring the price up of the other ones that were decent. So, right. that's, you know, I mean, once people realize what those things can do, right, they're going to climb, you know, right. A, a lot of people shit on them. It, it they're independent suspension, the third gen all around. I mean, that, it's cool. Like if, look, if you're not scaling rocks and you're not fucking crawling, then right. yeah, you know, it's not for that, but as far as overlanding and i know that's one of the questions tonight like you know kind of what category i'm into right they're all cool but um overlanding is probably you know remember overlanding could be on a bicycle or walking right so like automotive overlanding right so i feel bad because like the automotive world kind of took that that name and just ran with it and it's oh like there's other people that overland that don't have a, a truck you know what i mean so yeah motorcycles right bikes like yeah you know, but either way, that, that, that style of overlanding is, is my favorite. Um, and I thought the truck was really cool because the independent suspension, like you said, we'd have to travel how far on a highway or this and that to get to where we have to go. Right. So the road manners are phenomenal. The handling is great. I mean, as far as the truck goes, um, <laughs> yeah, as far as the 6,000 pound. Right. Exactly. And just, yeah. just the engineering is really cool. You know, you, you put it up there and there's like, dude, there must be like 12 control arms on this vehicle. Like it sucks in the wallet when you have to fix this shit, but like, but it's just cool to see the engineering, the, the drive shafts, carbon fiber, like it's cool. And to see the progression, yeah. To see the progression of the original Pajero or Montero solid axle front and rear, the second gen, like a Toyota independent front solid rear. And then the third gen and the fourth gen is the last. They're really the same platform. They're full independent suspension. So you know, as they won those Dakar rallies and they were really popular in that world, it was nice to see them kind of like modify the vehicle for competition. And you get a little trickle of that down. And I don't know. I just think it looks badass too, dude. It's not something that you see a lot. And I mean, what you've done with your own has, it's like, it's got a freaking look to it. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. It's it's so unique and so just different, which makes it so much more interesting than another like dime a dozen truck. Thank you. Um, and it's got, it's, it's great, dude. It's got, you know, it's got a super select system, like the transfer case. You can, you can go from like two high to four high to four high with the center locking diff under like 65 miles an hour. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. That is game changer. It's unbelievable. So That's like there's times awesome. I'm up in like New Hampshire or something where like on a windy, like concrete, you know, asphalt road. And then it's like, okay, Gaia says to hit this fire road crossover you can just shift it up into center lock and like it's it's seamless there's a four low center lock obviously you have to stop and yeah the gears over but it's cool we also added electronic rear locker so you know you can have center lock rear lock it's just really cool man i mean i don't know it's it's a badass truck you know i feel like that color is very specific to montero too like i know that there are other like maroon red 
yeah. around. Yeah. But like, correct. To me, yeah. like that's always a Japanese Montero. Like, yeah, it's like red, red mica pearl on Sudan beige. It's <laughs> <laughs> real Is world it? trucky, real rally style, you know? Yeah. Exactly. Those like, those were popular in that time. Those like LL Bean colors, you know what I mean? That was just yes. like, oh my God, yeah. like the Subarus were like a, a dark yep. you know, green with beige. You know, it was very popular. Eddie Bauer stuff. It was Bauer. very popular. Oh, there was one more. What was the Jeep that was like green and tan in the inside? Green? Oh, the Sahara? No, 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 no. Was it a, it wasn't like a, a brand? brand? Limited? Hold on. Hmm. So yours has the fender mirror too. I like that. Yeah, people hate because really that's for a right-hand drive car. That's right, exactly. Who cares? You but, put it on yours. It's fine. Fuck, I thought it was cool, dude. Fuck yeah. That. <laughs> Did you but want it? It's is that, fine. Is that actually it useful? On. Yeah. No, well, not where I'm sitting, no. So, no. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Plus, so my side view, they yeah. can say, hey, you're about to crash. I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Do you have an angle um, to blind your front passenger all the time? Like in the sun? Yeah, right, right. Like, <laughs> oh, my God, that'd be terrible. You know? Or if I get stuck off road, I can just like... Yeah. Sit planes you know what i mean yeah exactly it's an extra mirror just in case there you go. yeah man but um it's a good it's a good truck for sure so you mentioned the part about growing in the off-road world like with your customers so you guys do some you know some pretty good trips up north and sure and whatnot so can you like touch on that at all about about how the the hobby you've seen evolve with your customers and how that has shifted into what it is now yeah. I mean, again, the demand was there. So I figured like, okay, you know, and you kind of have this, like, uh, I want to say like, I don't know, it, being a shop from New York city and then being like, yo, we, we built some off-road trucks. It's kind of like, you're already like, you know, you have to, <laughs> to be like, okay, these guys really fucking do this. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I felt like, you know what, let's, you know, and a lot of the parts I sell are, are great parts, Dobinson's, Iron Man, you know, SPC and ARB, all these great brands, but they're not, terribly difficult brands to get right so nothing's really custom shop exclusive so i felt like uh, you know aside from the service and like the quality of the installation and knowledge of the products i wanted to give something just a little more that kind of gave me that edge so like when clients see that shit like holy shit this kid's from queens and like he's out there in utah on his truck colorado virginia you know maine new hampshire vermont like we in the montero we did thirty-eight thousand miles in one year dude wow oh, shit and i work six days a week Oh my god! <laughs> I mean, I took off like three weeks to go to Utah with the truck. Yes, but yeah. I know you. You know, you're gonna ask me some stuff too, like about any trips we've been on. But that, so obviously, that took a big chunk out of it. But yeah, we went hard with this truck, and we just wanted to show people, like, listen, dude, like we can build something, we can go the distance, and it just turned into like, you know, let's bring some clients along, like let's go do this, let's make some content, let's you know promote the brand a little bit and try these products out, you know, build something for the customer and then have them try it. Like when you told me you took your truck out and you had a good experience, that's, that's awesome. That's like, that's what we want. You can make it look cool. Yes. You can the parts on. Like you can be knowledgeable of the style, but to make something that's functional and like people are using, like, that's cool. So I felt like they needed to see the front of the business, you know, someone like myself doing right. actual sport and hobby and lifestyle, you know? So. Yeah. I mean, like the cachet that comes from, having faith in your own work and actually being a part of the community as opposed yeah. to somebody that's who's just like slow, fucking bro. parts you know that's that's scary too dude because like you know something happens on the trail bro one of these oh, trucks fail, you know a ball joint snaps or something yeah. like bro a they look at me and right. b i have to be the guy to fix it you know what i mean so <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fix you, know, ball joints. Guys, you know a lot of these guys are knowledgeable like but i do have a lot of customers that just like dude they're just like in new york city and like they live in an apartment and they don't have like a spot to hold tools or a garage. So they're not working on their rig a lot like that. And that's where I come into play. So yeah, it's, it's, it's tough, man. So we try to like, when we do these trucks, like I could be done, you know, on a Thursday, but I won't tell the customer till Friday or something on Saturday because I'll test drive it. I'll drive it around the neighborhood. Well, you know, look, we're in New York city, but I can get it up a little curb and see like the clearance on like lock to lock and like, you know, I try these things because I, I simulate maybe what you're going to end up doing and the stuff you're going to come into contact with, you know? So it's like, we try to prep them as best we can. You know, it's not just like turn the last bolt and like, all right, pick it up. It's like, right. put it back on the lift, check for torque, make sure there's no noises, make sure the alignment's correct. It's pulling, you know, not left or right, you know, mm -hmm. things like that, dude, clearance, you know, there's clearance and then there's like off-road clearance, right? Like, oh yeah, <laughs> you make your wheels clear, but then are they going to clear when you're articulating? That's another thing. So, you know, it's just, 
trying to just, you know, and that, that comes with also felt you're more knowledgeable about this and you're able to sell these products more and, and refer them to people when you've used them, you know, yeah, if I, you know, it works. Right. If I know that this tire was great in this situation, or I know that this certain diameter tire worked better than this because Ross told me, listen, dude, like, I should have went with the 65 or I should have went with the 295 or I think I could have squeezed the 305. Like, you know, I, it's better to be doing it and in the world and you get more real life info from that. And then you feel confident, you know, selling it to customers. So yeah. yeah, yeah. Confidence so, in your own work. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, on your truck, you, you, you have a rooftop tent. Yes. Are you enjoying it? Do you, yeah. are you okay with it? Like, yeah. I, I feel like the community sometimes is like, no ground tent, rooftop tent. And oh, you know, the other scary. thing that, that I'm in love with is an awning with a room. Oh yeah. 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 That's, <laughs> I know, that's my weird. jam. Cause I don't want the, I don't want the stuff on top. <laughs> right. No, no, no. I think the awning with the room is, is a great choice. I often tell customers like if they, you know, if they can't swing it for the rooftop tent, cause they're not cheap, dude, you know what I mean? Oh, and 25, 3,500 bucks, you know? So, <laughs> you know, I, that side room is awesome, man. You know, now for that, that trip we did, uh, Iron Man sponsored me for a lot of those parts, which is really cool. So, um, you know, having the tent with the side room, like beefing everything up was great for the content, but I, I truthfully, I love the rooftop tent. I think okay. for, for my job too, like when I'm out there and we're making content and like just that wow factor, it's, it's cool to have, but I, I think I could do all this with the side room for sure. And there's, yeah, there's a couple of reasons at night when you have to pee, right? Like it's nice to just walk out of the side room and not have yes. to smell a ladder when you're half sleeping, right? <laughs> um, two, if you have a dog or you have kids or something, you got to carry them up the ladder. Like, what are you going to do, dude? You know what I mean? Um, three, it's a lot more cost effective. Four, you don't get that crazy drag and crazy miles per gallon that you're seeing right now. Right. Even. right. But um, there's something to be said about sleeping elevated and like in a little mattress and stuff. Five, in the side room you can get up and change and stand you're yes. not like you know so it's kind of better almost in every way except for like the coolness factor you know right but the, the like instagram that. factor right means towards the uh the rooftop tent but... for sure it's also faster to set up um but a good old cot sleeping bag and a side tent you're good to go especially yeah. if you're doing a diesel heater thing where you're pumping heat into it right side tents it's pretty sweet you could just leave the heater outside just pump it in rather than trying to worry about it mounted on the roof right. or you know whatever so yeah but thanks thanks for realizing that yeah man there's a shower system in the back too so we got all kinds of stuff nice <laughs> that's awesome I didn't get so, to that either. <laughs> so you mentioned you mentioned the trips so the trips have like kind of evolved over time it sure. sounds and sure. i mean this is it sounds like a bit of a different spin we recently had the guys from express rally on and okay. the name of their off-road rally is slipping me which feels like overland adventure overland series. that one um and you know it's like kind of a guided tour and it's yeah they have they bring chefs and everything but you know no. you're actually like taking people that have you know faith in you to have built their vehicles sure. which like i mean it sounds a little stressful not gonna lie <laughs> I, i'd be lying through my teeth if i said it didn't yeah um, it's definitely but, stressful a lot of these clients that are coming though too have been out with these rigs so they're kind of tried and tested also <laughs> so you know it's not like Again, we just like finished this guy's build and he's about to drive 1500 miles with us, you know what I mean, the next day. Yeah. But, you know, so a lot of them have been, you know, most of these people coming are pretty experienced with this stuff and have, have gone the distance. So I'm a little more confident in that sense for sure. Um, I feel like anything at this point would just be like, you went off roading and your shit broke, dude. Or like, you know, <laughs> or just like, or just something, you know, something weird. Like, I, I don't think there's any like negligence at this point because all these trucks have been on the road for, for months, a year. They've been to yeah. West yeah. Coast and back. So, so pretty good, but, but yeah, but, but thanks, man. Yeah. It's, um, it's definitely something I look at it more as like, you know, just giving the customers a cool experience and having them use their rigs. And I try to stay with that positive vibe and hopefully it'll be okay. What kind of thing planned? Um, yeah, we have, um, so in May we have an event called escape New York where the idea is just to get out of the static and get out of the city. So we're going to drive up to the border of Canada into in Pittsburgh in New Hampshire. So the top of New Hampshire. Yeah, which is awesome. That's and, where I go on a quad trip twice oh, a year. <laughs> twice a year. Oh, I love that, dude. I'm up there in the fall all the time for years and years. Yes. One of my favorite places. Absolutely Best. beautiful. It's so rural and it's so beautiful. It's unbelievable. It's yep. how is it in, in May? Is it still like sticks or there is it pines? Like I, I'm just unfamiliar with the 
all on, <laughs> green against, at all like yeah it's kind of like that turn it's right before the season starts okay what i know like trying to book like campsites and things like i'm just missing it by like two weeks okay so mid-month would be when everything opens up and supposedly everything's thawed the time we're going should be like mud season so okay yeah, yeah. no completely understand <laughs> copy so we're gonna see hopefully it might be a shit show but we're gonna see man it'll be <laughs> that's see. awesome but uh yeah so the idea is to start um pittsburgh um new hampshire and then make our way through again you know class six roads or whatever mm -hmm. on our way down and um we're gonna make our way probably over three days through one of the more southern points of new hampshire then on that that day we're just gonna drive through massachusetts connecticut from like north to south which isn't a very like big run maybe 100 miles or so stop at a brewery <laughs> chill and then we're gonna ferry over the long island sound and then spend the last awesome. time on talk so it's cool oh, so, yeah. yeah you'll start like deep rural woods border of canada and then you'll finish up days later on the coast and just you know it'd be cool one of our customers um well actually one of the clients yeah one of the clients that are coming he works for for wheel pros so you know nice. of course yeah. yeah oh yeah his buddy has a uh i think a fish market or a, a seafood restaurant in in the hampton so that guy's gonna meet us that day and do a uh, like a whole seafood bake for us on the beach so should be oh, wow. so a lot of different terrain you know like you might go from some snow and cold to mud to forest and then you're gonna end up on the ocean mm -hmm. it'd be a pretty cool aesthetic you know for sure so it's gonna be slick that's the guarantee yeah that time of year uh, right. greasy what, what weekend is that out of curiosity so it's actually may 1st to the 5th so we're starting on a sunday so that's why like we can cruise through weekdays as we're going through this so maybe the trails won't be as populated and it just might be a little better time to get around you know be, yeah it gives you more of a sense of like a vacation too for these guys you know when right we do, not just, just sitting in traffic on uh on like 91 and in, in yeah. or something <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah right exactly um, yeah I, i've seen a lot of that too on my, okay. my side That'll be cool. Those I haven't done those classics rides, but they look pretty spectacular. I mean, dude, listen, if you want to roll, let us know, buddy. It'd be a lot of fun. Shit, yeah. maybe I'll just come up and meet you guys for a trail day. Cool. That'd be great. I'll let you know where I'm at. I'll send you the route. Yeah. What's you know, we're we're mixing That's like good. we're mixing like uh something called the hamster trail and mixing with the Trans New Hampshire expedition. And we're kind of like mm -hmm. taking a few more popular routes and I mix them up a little bit along with some stuff I know and made kind of a custom route. So yeah, it should be good. Let's I did, uh let's make it happen. You need yeah. to not suggest only a trail day. Like you're missing the opportunity to get sponsored for a rooftop tent here, buddy. Like, oh, yeah, you need, no, you no, need no, no, something no, no, to sleep no, no, no. in. <laughs> no, no, no. I'll fold seats to sleep in the back of the truck. No, 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 no rooftop tent. That That's is where the spare is. We've been over this. You need more I know, space. I'm still trying to figure out the spare, but yeah. yeah, let's let's talk about this because that could be a fun little collaboration there. And, uh, yeah, man, for sure. The spare is easy, dude. JW off road. You can do something on the no. door. We can do. They came out a new swing out now. Or you can do like the rigged setup where you do into the hitch that works really well too. So those are surprisingly expensive. They are, but, <laughs> but they don't suck, and that's the thing. Usually those yeah. systems kind of suck, you know, from other brands. So wobble like crazy. Yeah, yeah they there's, have a good. Say there's again? one. There's one at my wife's work. It's a forerunner with a hitch mounted like spare like that, and it sticks up. And as he leaves the parking lot, I just kind of watch it wiggle. Oh, <laughs> just like that's so bad. So sketch. Why does no one drive behind me on the highway? What are we <laughs> terrified of it falling off? <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it's been so fun. we did some cool stuff. Yeah, man. The Utah trip was really cool with the truck. That was bad. Yeah, that, that, looked, that looked that looked real good. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, just in terms of like other stuff that I wanted to ask yeah. while we have you on the show, I mean, what kind of difficulties have you had in running an off-road shop in Queens, and also just like the complexities that come with it in general? Um, space is a factor. Generally, yeah. when you're dealing with four by four parts, they're massively big parts, right? Like a bunch I, of- I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> you know, no, it's okay. I'm not- Actually, it's still there, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm good. Dude. <laughs> you said that, you sent me that message the other day. No, you're like, good. Oh, no, but no. what I mean is like, like wheels and tires and bumpers, like you have suspension there, Ross, like no big fucking deal, yeah. that's fine. But, but yeah, I'm just constantly getting like 35 to 40 inch tires rolling through my doors. You know, it's like, you know, I have a smaller spot in Queens, 4,500 square feet, not super small, but not the biggest spot. You know, there's shops out there that I may, and they have parking lots, you know, that's the other thing yeah. too, you know? Yeah. So I have to make sure that like cars are not sitting in my shop. And when they're, you know, I get the stuff efficiently and get them out because I can't, I two cars sitting in my shop, but that's it. You know what I mean? I can fit a bunch so. in there, but. Is that you know, Jeep like, still up on the lift? Um, no, we got it out. We 
Okay. <laughs> that would have been a problem. We got a long term M3 there right now. And um and that's Toyota we're doing some stuff with. So yeah. But um yeah, space is definitely a factor. You know, a lot of these parts are just massive, I've noticed. So, you know, when we did more car stuff, it wasn't, you know such an issue with like storing things you know but that's cool that's that's you know i'm blessed that more parts are coming through the door than less right um is the is the honda acti still there the acti is that, is that no, a shop so, truck that guy's the man dude he he's that got there an Acti. There. he also has a volkswagen polo that he awesome. imported yeah. yeah he has a bronco 2 okay so, like a little Bronco Jr. Like the old. Yeah. Uh -huh. He's got some funky cars, but that guy is a really cool guy, man. Got some sure. eclectic taste. I love yeah, I yeah. love the little JDM K cars. Like the they're great. They're, they're just adorable. They're great. They're hard to get now. You can't really can't really get them in New York like that anymore. Really? There's really laws against them now, yeah. Oh, so you have to like pull a scheme where like you can either register it as some sort of agriculture or farm, farm. truck. Yeah, farm plates. Yeah. Or you do the classic like get an LLC in Montana. Yeah. <laughs> one square foot yeah and do that you usually see montana plates on like lamborghini but you can put oh, yeah. it, in the it, you know, like, that is it seems like new york is <laughs> such the perfect spot for them like is it just a legal thing like somebody got mad well you know what it is it's like i guess it's kind of like you know if you're gonna do it in one place you gotta kind of do it throughout right so like yeah it, okay in queens and brooklyn and manhattan sure you're going yeah. three miles an hour that's awesome but when you're in the adirondacks and you're going 90 miles an hour and 80 <laughs> you know what i mean so it's a different yeah. kind of New York that would be vehicle, you know so, so sketchy yeah so it's not really remember too like their top speed is like 60 and like yeah. if you're doing that it's it's revving out to its like absolute limits so it's like not the best <laughs> yeah I've, I've always wanted one but it makes absolutely no sense here because right. everything they're, they're is at great. 70 like, miles an hour right. You right. One. right if i deliver I? Part of something it would be sweet you know what i mean if i was yeah. like delivery yeah. that'd be you know but um that's true yeah it's more of like a hype thing than a real practical thing i thought about it too because there's a guy in like in hudson valley upstate that he just has a whole lot and that's all he does he just sells like k trucks and k cars but uh, i, I think that's wired, i'm pretty sure that's a friend of mine you know there you go yeah <laughs> heavy imports or heavy imports or something like that i don't know but um these guys great guy and he ran me through like what you'd have to do to actually get one of these so if anybody's listening to this, it's like, it's not as easy as just buy it. And there's been people who buy them and then register, but the title never comes or like they'll get the title and within weeks. They get another letter saying you have to surrender your shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> what? It sucks. And then, you know, what sucks too? You, if that's the case, how are you going to resell this thing, dude? Yeah. You know? You're not. You're like, yo, it's five grand, but you got to spend 12 grand on an LLC or have a farm, bro. You know, people are just going to be like, no, you know what I mean? Arms are expensive. <laughs> yeah. You know? So, but yeah, that is a really cool car. This kid probably got it like before all that was going down, you know, because the import so. for a while. So, well, yeah. didn't Florida just like negate a bunch of stuff or like skylines and it's possible. I know Maine had that whole thing with the Delicas, right? Yeah. yeah. Maine you is. So it's that was like, tail end of 2021 yeah right exactly so i don't know you know yeah i guess everybody's kind of taken to it differently you know yeah like so a, have you had any like really 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 strange propositions that have like floored you in terms of what they asked for on the four by four stuff because i know i saw that jeep and, and we won't talk any more about it than that but that jeep was a proposition which one the commander the commander it was like a why in the hell like Oh yeah. I mean, you know, I don't know, like proposition as far as like do this to my car kind of thing. Yeah, or, like, like unique yeah, stuff. That's propositions. That's yeah, oddball. I mean, uh, that's probably one of the more oddball. I mean, I've I've had customers, I I had a guy with like a Audi TT that was like a two thousand, like a Mark One TT, but literally wanted like everything from like a newer TT, which that was just really weird. Like the car must have been like 15 G's and you probably spent like 40 like just doing like weird shit like push button start and like the like brembo brakes from like and like ttrs wheels from the new like like it was just wild like just weird stuff like that but you know what it is it's weird for us but it's not weird for the client and like i respect yeah. that like the commander one is, is a wild one and it's not probably the more common platform but it's kind of cool it's independent suspension solid rear v8 third row like mm -hmm. kind of cool and he's building an overland vehicle and you know it's I look at it more of like a cool challenge. It's like, all right, this is a weird platform. If I can get through this and make the client happy and you know, this is it, then 
you know, fuck it. I don't ever want to be the shop to like pick up and be like, ah, we don't do that. Like peace, you know, now some stuff. Yeah. I'm going to be like, listen, I, it's tough for me to get involved with. It's not my forte, but right. I would try, you know, those weird platforms to me are, are more of like a learning curve and just trying to make it work. But okay. um, respect that. Yeah. that dude, that's an awesome answer. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. You know, I, I mean, yeah, there's, there's times that people bring some, like, they just want some weird shit, but again, like, as a business, sometimes you like, you have to turn it away, but you have to do it graciously too. You know, like that's important. There's times I don't, I'm not going to make somebody feel like shit about something that's, I might hate it in my head and might be like, Mm -hmm. Jesus, the fucking worst thing ever. Like go home and pay your rent. Don't spend it on this. You know, (laughs) but like, but you know, I'll try to, um, I'll try to swerve and, you know, just kind of deflect, you know, and and do it the right way. But, um, as far as like, like propositions, like, like business or like, you know, venturing off into different things. I've been approached by a few, a few production companies to do like a reality show kind of thing. There was one for oh like Discovery Channel and things like that. But once I got into like really talking to them about what they wanted, and I've even gotten to the point where they've come down and filmed like some pilots or like just really? some stars, you know. But it's dude, like they all just want this like drama bullshit that like yep. I just don't, I can't fuck with that, dude. Yeah, like I completely you know, understand. I have you know, witnessed that be, and it is not okay. Oh like, if it was a cool thing where they came down and documented, let's say, you know, Ross's build and we talked about this and that, but that's not what sells. People aren't like, gonna watch that. Right. They want Ross to come down and it's like me to stage his wheel falling off as he drives down the block and yep. then he comes back and he has this big conniption and I have to stay open until midnight to finish it. Like some bullshit. Yep. It's like, dude, like, you know, I'm not so- I'm not like that. The hilarious thing about it is like, that's what the production company wants. Right. It's not really what the audience wants. The audience was actually down for just like the amount of dudes that watch people build stuff on YouTube. Right. Like, I don't understand how production companies haven't figured out yet. Like there are eyeballs on that stuff. It's true. It's true. And maybe there's the production companies are just representing like, like a channel or, you know, like, that's just like, it's, it's it, what an executive has asked them to go find right <laughs> like my show would be like right after like the housewives of whatever so it's just this whole like airhead community yeah, of staten just, island runs, you know yeah. so you know I, like if the speed channel came up to me then i'm sure maybe they would hear me out if i was like listen dude i want this to be more docu style and like real deal mm-hmm. but if like you know again like i don't know one of these other fucking you know I don't even know, dude. I didn't even grow up with cable, so I have no fucking idea. But well, I think what I think what happened is that like, you know, whoever it was that put like Orange County Choppers and Gas Monkey into production, like they struck gold, and everybody's yeah. just trying to replicate that. Yeah, and I'm not hating on these shows where that's an element of it. It's just it really wasn't for me, and the, to the degree at least they wanted me to like portray this style. Like, I I didn't want that because, dude, I'm not like The Simpsons out here where I'm gonna be fucking. 40 seasons you know what i mean 30 oh, yeah you know, it, you're gonna run me for one season maybe yeah. make me look like a douchebag and then i'm gonna have to go just my normal life again and you so, have to go back to your business yeah. right right like, <laughs> you know, people be like, oh, you're that dick who like six years ago like dude like you know what i mean like chucked a wrench at an employee right yeah. you know what i mean right you know so and then I mean, you gotta hire new people <laughs> right. <laughs> right so that was um but yeah that was a great question though but okay. uh, yeah thanks man i hope i answered that okay yeah no that i mean that's the first time anybody said that on the show. So uh, <laughs> uh, what's, uh, what, what's up your sleeve for like dream builds for yourself, like cars and trucks? Oh man, it, it's, it's, it's hard, man, to say because I, cars, it's tough because I, I there's just so Check much variety, changes. but like, yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm sure I can really get super creative with the, with the Overland truck thing too, but I, I really, if I could have like a dream build right now, like let's say a truck that I can take on expeditions and trips and stuff that would rep the shop and, and, you know, bring people, I would love a land cruiser, like a newer style, like a 200 series. I think that would be really cool. I would love like a 40 series. That'd be badass too. But you know, something that I can 100% get in every time that has everything that I can just like go, you know, yeah. the 100 series is, I, I mean, maybe people are like, Oh, he should have chose this, but I don't know. I think that that's really a, a solid, solid setup, you know, or, yeah. or a, Montero that never broke down that'd be sweet too so. i mean so a 70 series land cruiser <laughs> yeah there you go right <laughs> the thing we can't get yeah right 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 one of my customers has a, a 70 series land cruiser prado really cool one is that the green oh. one yeah the green one Thanks. yeah yeah it looked great 
Thanks, buddy. That was cool. It had a uh, ankle burner exhaust, so it had a side pipe exhaust. Yeah, I saw that. That's like whoa, so dude. Strange. I hopped, and it's turbo. You know what I mean? We did an intercooler in it. We did all these cool hop up parts, and like made a bunch of power. And like that, dude. One day I hopped out of the side of it, and I just laid my calf muscle on this thing, dude. Oh, and I just oh no, I heard it sizzle, and I was like, what the fuck? And I was like, holy shit! I and smell I hair. Dude, I, smell, I pulled my leg off and dude, my skin pulled off like gone. Oh, Yo, dude, I still have that <laughs> dark spot on the back. I'm of sure my- you do. Yeah. Oh. At least it was a cool car though, you know? Yeah. Just, Start uh, thinking about tattoo ideas. Right, right. <laughs> the tattoo is not from a viper. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Or the actual like warning label from the viper. I can Yes. Guess. Oh, yeah. my God. That'd be so funny. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. We have a customer with a Viper 2013 GTS manual. Beautiful. Freaking cars. Yeah. Jumped up big time. I mean, much like everything else, but yeah. Yeah, Um, I guess 200 series cruiser man would be, would be really cool. Fully hopped up or I guess like an earth roamer or something would be badass, but like, you know, know, that's cool. And um, that sounds great, but like, how does that do in the New Hampshire woods? Yeah, you're right. That's the other thing too. Yeah, it's the other thing too. Guys awesome. with these raptors and these gladiators and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Oh it's no. Like, oh, you know, we're not in Moab. We're in Connecticut. So you know what I mean? Like, you have to get down this tight trail and make. Have this- you seen an Earth Cruiser? Earth Cruiser. So they're uh, a Zuzu cab over based. Oh shit! Okay. And the they're the way they're designed is the entire thing will fit in a shipping container. Sick. Which yeah. is still wider than the trails in New Hampshire. It's still, but like, it's <laughs> drastically smaller than an Earth Roamer. Yes. Like, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, sure. That's cool. I'll send you a link. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That'd be cool. That's sweet, man. We, but, we had the, the president of that company on the show, and I have nice. always, like, he, he told a story about being solo in the Sahara and getting stuck. That was crazy. Which, like, which is him and his wife, and it took him multiple days to get the truck unstuck. And they had a winch. And I had a land anchor, but the, the sand that they were in was so silty and fine. Wow. Like, oh, Days it's not. to recover you, it. Yeah. So, yeah if you're was, listening, you haven't listened sick. to that episode. You got to skip to that part. It's gonna, so yeah. good. <laughs> that's it. Wow. That was a while ago, man. Wow. Dude, that's, yeah. I might try to get him back. So please, <laughs> please. So, all right. So we're getting towards the end. So let's, uh, let's do the last few hits here. So you guys are doing road rallies too. Woo. Yeah. People oh, yeah. Like, like on tarmac stuff so yeah oh, similar yeah. vein where you like pick a route and kind of hop from place to place um yeah so yeah we try to do uh two driving events a year sports cars that'll be um spring and fall this spring not so much we're gonna do the overland thing i um i traded my my car and then i would do these rallies with to upgrade to the car that chris doesn't like and we'll uh, <laughs> <laughs> which one do i not oh. like oh the bmw the M3, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm not judging you for it. No, like, I just don't think it looks good on the outside. I don't, I think yeah, it's still a good I don't car. take it personally at all. No, I got it. <laughs> no, 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 I'm just fucking around. But um, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm waiting on that to come in. So we're not going to do really nice. hard time this, this spring. But yeah, so it's really cool. So I'll get probably like maybe 10, 12 customers together, all sports cars, stuff that we've worked on, suspension, wheels, tires, good driving cars. And um, again, we do a beautiful route. A lot of it is in New England because your roads are absolutely beautiful. I mean, yeah. unbelievable. And um, yeah, so it was cool. We, we'll usually drive up one day, rent like a huge Airbnb, like a big cabin that people would rent for like a wedding or something. And then everybody has their own room. We'll cater food, which is cool. So it's one fee for like each driver. And I preset all that up. So you get a hoodie, walkie talkie, the itinerary, stickers for the car. It's a really cool event. And then, you know, you get up there that night. We have a party, have a good time, drink some beers, do a campfire thing, have catered food, wake up the next day. And then we run this route that's usually a loop the route. So it'll bring you right back to kind of where you are, spend the night and then the next day go home. Um, and people really love it. It's just, it's a really beautiful event. We'll take a videographer, we'll take a photographer, all the stuff's on YouTube if you ever guys want to watch it. Um, but the really nice thing is this past fall, we did one called the Custom Shop Autumn Enduro. So it was like an Enduro challenge. It was an endurance wow. kind of challenge thing, right? So it was a thousand miles and we drove out to the end of um, Long Island. We ferried over the sound backwards through Connecticut, through Massachusetts, kind of the reverse of like the overland trip. Yeah. And then um, we got into New Hampshire that first day and we spent the night, we did the best roads in the White Mountains, crossed over to Vermont. Yeah, it was awesome, dude. We Then after crossing to Vermont, 
we spent the night. So we did hotels on this one, three Hilton hotels. We got a group rate. So each spot we stopped and um, we did the best of the green mountains, went on another ferry across Lake Champlain and then did the best of the Adirondacks and spent the night in Lake oh, George. Yes. It was a three night, four day, 1000 miles. Oh my God. And it was just unbelievable. And again, we do it during the week. So there's not really people on the road. And like, you know, we're having fun on the roads. We're not like it's not a race, dude. You it's know not a I mean? bull run. Yeah, nobody's right. got anything. To do. No, it's not like that. There's no like burnouts driving on the other side of the road. Like it's nothing like that. Like you know, it's just more a nice, like nice cruise. If you're in an area where you're like in the mountains, there's no one fucking around. You know, kick up the speed a little bit, take the turns, but nothing you can't surely back down from. You know, you're not going 80 around a 20 mile an hour turn. You know, it's you know you're cruising. So it's more about just getting out there, getting the photos, just you know, just having a whole kind of experience for the clients. So yeah, we do the on-road thing and the off-road thing. And um, it's very dear to our heart. So we love that stuff, man. It's a good but balance. Thanks, man. It's a good balance. Yeah, man. Also, good. I mean, like people should on New England for the roads, but if you get to the right spots, they're, they're pretty good. Oh yeah, dude. No, there's some, dude, I mean, unbelievable. Yeah, potholes. Right. <laughs> there's not much in the way bottles once you get out of no. Okay. Of it is like, I'll do a lot of research on like really like famous like motorcycle routes. That's it. Kind of link them and then like we'll use those to drive on because they're usually super scenic with great pull offs yeah. and yeah. it's just unbelievable. We do the Kankamagas Highway and oh yeah, stuff up there. It's just it's absolutely gorgeous. So, dude, I, I dug far enough deep in your Instagram. I found a camping cruise. Yeah, dude. That so yeah. Thanks, man. That was, um, <laughs> Car camping. Yeah. So that was during during like that was definitely during the pandemic where it was, it was like bunch- may 2020 so yeah oh, like, wow. the height of it <laughs> right it was a bunch of buddies and we were like all right dude you know like we want to get out there we want to do a trip so what we did was you you couldn't find a campsite nothing was open right so i use an app called hip camp right which was like basically airbnb of camping so people just rent you their land privately we found this like crazy war veteran dude this guy was awesome he lived in the adirondacks and he was just like yeah i'll rent you my land no problem so he rented the land and what we did was it was like maybe seven or eight of us we all brought our cars and we all brought tents and we camped out individually in our tents and kept it pretty socially different so we just same thing we ran some roads man and we just camped out of the cars and like well camped out of a a ground tent but brought everything in the car packed really light everybody brought just like you know nosh kind of food and like that was it dude and we we had a great time and and it was cool man yeah that was that was cool that was a lot of fun Real fast. What's the Volkswagen with the rear diffuser? And oh, so that's a Volkswagen. That's a golf all track, right? So that's the is golf it? Van. Yeah. Oh, with yeah. The IS 38 swap. So it has the turbo from the golf R. Okay. I think that car puts like almost 500 wheel down or something. Like <sighs> Dude, it's, is it a annual DSG car or a stick? No a stick. Fuck yes. Yeah, Ross, I'll, I'll clip Ross, this picture and send it to you. <laughs> Say it again, Chris. I said I'm gonna clip this picture and send it to Ross so he can. Yeah, that's it's a like lot. the dream daily. Yeah, that dude is like again, he's very eccentric with his choices. Have you did you see that like Opel we posted up recently? But it was it was a Saturn Sky, but rebadged as the Opel GT. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So like that's his car too. Like he, he chooses these like wild like sleeper cars that you would never you know. But um, that so that strange. sky is kind of a cool platform, dude. You know, terrible. Oh, the yellow one. You know, yeah. It sure is. So you know, pretty cool. So um, that that guy's pretty eccentric. But yeah, that's what that Volkswagen is. Yeah. He also had um when he when we first met him, he had a Mitsubishi Lancer Rally Art wagon hatch thing. Yeah, it had like a dual clutch transmission. It was kind of like yeah. an Evo, but not. It was funky. It's like color. a WRX. Right. Evo light. Right. Um, exactly and uh, he had one of those so yeah that's yeah that's what that car was pretty well he's he's not passing his helmet through the windows of that opal either (laughs) (laughs) good freaking call back there exactly that roof is kind of funky you know i think it is comments like that's the shittiest roof ever like someone in there you know (laughs) i looked at the kid's profile he was like i don't know some yeah Nebraska or something it's like Dude, <laughs> years ago i i was in my 80 series at on the top of trail ridge road up at the alpine visitor center and just off the road comes like 30 saturn skies whoa <laughs> it was like a club it was like saturn skies and like pontiac uh solstice, solstice. Yeah, yeah, solstice. yeah and they were just like a club driving yeah. through colorado and I was underappreciated like, yeah. yeah 
great road I, too, to take a kind of car like that forget i did it. start looking i was like how many gxps are here and i saw two <laughs> nice yeah G- <laughs> i was, was like gxp yeah, coupes cool are still in money yeah yeah that was a cool car so and uh and just to just close out with a callback from earlier the uh the zj grand cherokee that i was thinking of was the orvis edition oh orvis. whoa that was a brand you weren't wrong yeah. Was wrong. And it was like an L.L. Bean kind of brand. So. I would say that's worth the wait, Ross. Thank you, Google, for the yeah. answer on that one. That's worth the wait. That would have been like a David Tracy question. <laughs> he would have known it right off the back. Well, no, he would have made fun of you. Yes. Like he, he, would have, he would have mocked the Orvis edition. He does not. <laughs> <laughs> he wants the cheapest one with the manual. And, yeah. yeah. He doesn't want the fancy one. Uh, so. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, sweet. I'll wrap up the show. Nice. Uh, you can rate and review the show on iTunes or Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to it. It'd be, we appreciate it. Spotify even. You can like and subscribe on YouTube. <laughs> it always makes me laugh when I say it. <laughs> uh, you can follow Brett. He's at the Custom Shop NYC. You got it. And then Ross has on here at Brett World. Yes, that's my personal. But yeah, the shop's more. The shop's way cooler. You don't want to see me. You want to see the shop. <laughs> <laughs> like There's my a lot personal. of good shit on the shop. Yeah. No. Appreciate uh, that. A li- I, I'm literally, I'm actually pained by the fact that I couldn't share photos tonight because your photos are fantastic on the oh, show. Thank you, man. I know. Instagram. Oh, like, really they, like everyone you were talking about, I was like, I just saw, I want to share. So like, guys, if, you, if you're watching or if you're listening, please go follow at the custom shop NYC. They're yeah. great photos. I shoot all the photos too. I'm the owner operator. So not too bad. Yeah. And it's, it's, I seeped it. It's so <laughs> like literally the amount of stuff that you guys deal with is so eclectic. Like, Thank you. You're not going to get bored looking at like, oh, another one. Like, it's yeah. like, there's some channels I follow. Like, oh, great. It's another one. Like, dude, yeah. when you follow my channel, it's way too much of my kids. I get it. Okay. But when like, my truck was in the shop, it was in the actual facility itself was Supra, uh, fifth gen forerunner, the Acti, and a Jeep, and the Commander. Like, <laughs> and that's not even the weirdest mix. That's like, no, that sounded <laughs> that was just a fairly Friday. calm. You know, that was a Friday. It, yeah. it wasn't anything weird. So I appreciate that, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I like the matchups. They're really cool, you know? Yep. Yeah. So you can follow uh, Hooniverse, the Hooniverse on Twitter, the real Hooniverse on Instagram, and you can follow Ross at No Not Like the One from Friends. I'm at Overlanding Dad. I feel like these are weirdly ordered tonight, Ross. Are they out of order? I changed the order. Oh, you did, you're messing with me. <laughs> oh. I thought it made more sense that way. That's fine. And you can Dude, read... It's been a hundred something shows. We got to shake it up once in a while. Sure. <laughs> You can read <laughs> our writing on Hooniverse, UTV Driver, ATV Writer, Everyday Driver, and the U.S. News and World Report, yep. which I just I just turned in three more. So hopefully nice. some of those start more of those start going up. So cool. I, dude, they complete non sequitur. One of my assignment was best off road camping trailers. They didn't know. They just yeah, assigned you know, that to me, and I was like, it? I was like, how? I, and I'm limited on slides. Like I could only have so many choices that I was like, <laughs> I don't think you guys would know. You've just punished yeah. me by forcing me to limit it to 10. Like I, yeah. there's so many more. So I'm hope I'm hoping that I pick some stuff that like, I kind of did a Google search and I was like, there was a lot of stuff that I feel like I know about that I hadn't seen on those lists before. But then there's also like some mm-hmm. stuff that definitely needs to be like the brooder ones down in Australia with their active suspense. Like that has to be on the list. That's just ridiculous. Like, but then I, I tried to slide some stuff in there that maybe a little, little lesser known in the United States. That's around. Like there, stuff I, that you, you fascinate over. Yeah, I freaking, I love a camping trailer. Mainly because I, I just want to put my kids in it and then go sleep in the truck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's our show. Thank you so that's much, it. Brett. Brett, thank you, man. I really appreciate it. Thanks that's a lot for of fun. Me, man. You guys are great. If I ever, you ever want me to come back, dude, I'm all game. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. God bless you guys. Definitely. We'll have you back. Thank you.